<clears throat> we'll take questions from the audience. Whoever wants to we'll ask, come here. Yeah. you need to come here so she can hear you clearly. So, Say hello to Maria. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> nice to see you. That's, uh, I, I just have a, a small comment because I saw that uh, I think this is an important topic, of course, uh, and uh, everyone is uh, relying on Burke and Van Binsbergen to say the, um, the effect on the cost of capital is small, so divestiture are not going to matter. But uh, in corporate governance, I think we should know better that the threat of exit might matter. So we might not see an effect on the cost of capital, but it might nevertheless matter. So we are not uh, saying the final word, but uh, in uh, a forthcoming paper with Nick and Ganchev and Rackley, we argue that the threat of exit can improve governance. Is, uh, but uh, I think we need uh, much more research on this, but I don't think we should cite that paper as saying the final word on this, even if it is very provocative, as always, with Jonathan Berg. <laughs> but... Thanks, yeah, that's a good point. Somebody would like to... Okay. Yeah, I'm Jonathan Berg, I'm So my question is about the size of these ESG committed funds and whether they can really change uh, policies. So if it is really a conflict uh, between financial performance and ESG, what, uh, what are the non-ESG funds doing, right? Can they somehow counteract the policies that the ESG funds are trying to pursue? Or how do you see the potential conflict within investors? I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? I missed the first part. Yeah, so uh, you have ESG funds or committed ESG funds. I don't know which fraction of shares they hold, but you will also have non-ESG funds, right? So the yeah. interests of those groups are different. So which uh, the interests of which type of fund will, will, will be more important? So in some way, if ESG funds are trying to pursue ESG policies, what are the non-ESG funds doing, right? Are they trying to stop companies from, from, from implementing these policies? And I guess it depends yeah. on the size of the funds compared to non-ESG funds. No, that's a good point. So thinking about the interaction is sort of in the ownership structure. Um, yeah, that's a good point. We should think more about that. In a lot of our regressions, we are sort of controlling for the ownership of different funds, and we can sort of contrast them. But I think you're exactly right. We can think about these issues more explicitly. Sure. Would you like to respond to previous uh, comments or to the discussion? Yeah, let me just um, thank you, Ronnie, very much. I didn't we really can, need to we can now that. see your um, we can now session. see your face, uh, your nice face. So we can see when you smile and when you don't smile. So <laughs> <laughs> look at us. <laughs> Can't hide, huh? Um, uh, no, seriously. Thank you very much for the comments. Um, your point about how we measure incentives to engage is spot on. We've been sort of thinking a lot about this, and I think your comments are encouraging us to think even more about that. So I appreciate it, and I look forward to getting your slides. Thanks.